Hey there, it's the BNPR Show, number seven, a celebration of stylized rendering. Today's highlights, a much simpler cartoon vortex, dithering so simple it only has four nodes, and LANPR has improved a lot. Let's dive into the show. If the idea of making a spinny vortex from the previous show still spins your head, then this one will make it very clear, since it is much simpler. Chris Kierford wrote an interesting cartoon wind vertex tutorial on the Blender Artist forum. There are three meshes with a cylinder shape. Each object is set up pretty much the same, except one of the meshes with two extra object modifiers. The overview of the modifier stack looks like this. One, at the top, vertex weight edit. This is for the first vertex weight with a cloud texture. Two, another vertex weight edit. In this case, a gradient weight. Three, a vertex weight mix modifier to mix the two vertex weight edit modifiers. Note, a vertex group is needed with each vertex weight modifier to store the vertex weights. Four, a mask modifier to mask off the unwanted vertices. Five, a simple deform modifier to deform the mesh to a spin. And six, a smooth modifier to get rid of the blocky mesh and turn it into an almost subdivided mesh, but much nicer and lighter. For the second and third mesh, modifier two and three are not needed. However, there must be some variation on them to look pretty. So just play with the numbers in the modifier stacks. To animate the vortex, add an empty and link it in the vertex weight edit modifier. Now, if you spin and scale the empty, the vortex will spin as well. Add some color and you're done. You have to try this one out they are a lot of fun. Here are two handy tricks. Number one, at Anatoya Blend, the creator of the new grease pencil, gives us a neat trick. It allows you to close an open grease pencil stroke. You just go into stroke edit mode and press F to close the stroke. This is very handy in the situation when we want to close the stroke but don't want to ruin everything drawn. Number two, at Jan Vandenhemmel brought another cool NPR trick. This time, using a shape key to add facial expressions to your NPR character. All the parts are meshes shrink-wrapped onto the face. Using shape keys, set the basis for the default shape. Then create another shape key, set the influence to 1.0, and edit the mesh to the expression you want. Do that enough times, and you'll get a multitude of facial expressions. And now your stylized characters can show how they feel about the Blender 2.80 release. Here is a tutorial straight from us. This tutorial is based on the blend file by at Magrilia on Twitter. The idea is to make two colors dithering using a Bayer-like filter. The core of the idea is this texture. Here are the RGB values for each pixel. The order from bright to dark is like this, so you can see the pattern going on here. Skip one pixel diagonal and across. Repeat this pattern to fill your image size. After that, we use this compositor node setup to make the dithering. The original image is in grayscale. We subtract the value of that image to the Bayer filter texture and we get this result. Using greater than math node, anything bigger than zero will be white and anything lower than zero will be black. Then we recolor it using a color ramp. If your colors do not look like the colors you set in the color ramp, go to the properties windows render tab, look for the color management panel and change the view transform from filmic to standard. And there you have it, a very nice dithering using just texture. And FYI, Bryce E. Bayer proposed this technique in a paper in, can you even guess? Yeah, 1973. Later this method is called ordered dithering. Ordered dithering is used a lot in older games. For more info on the Bayer filter, please go to the show notes. And, if you're hardcore enough, you'll spend days on this alone. Robot will protect you. Now has a game. It's called Encodia, in all caps. The game is developed by Nicola Piovazan and Chaosmonger Studio. The story expands from the animation. It's 2062. Tina, a nine-year-old orphan, lives with Sam53, her big clumsy robot guardian, on a rooftop makeshift shelter in Neo Berlin a dark megapolis controlled by corporations. The protagonist is an urban jungle kid, which has learned to survive alone, scavenging dumpsters of the dystopian city. 
eking out a living of scraps. Her funny robot always with her, programmed to protect the girl, no matter what. It's a point-and-click story adventure. We solved puzzles, ogled at the artworks and designs, and brainwashed into the excellent world-building audio. We were totally hooked on it for hours. If you want a test of the adventure, then go download the demo. Link to the demo is in the show notes. And yes, they're going to do a Kickstarter soon. So we'll update you on that. Archer Markle is at it again. Kobe is digging. Holes. Go watch it. Don't want to spoil it too much. My Scary Lawnmower Story. Even if you can't draw like Arthur Markle, you can do what CG Geek has done. Don't care about the quality of the art style, just tell the story as is. It's a pretty fun story, so go watch it. Oliva. When you embrace noise, you get Oliva by Geraldo Fagner. The animation has lots of noise and is quite atmospheric. Since it is short, we won't spoil it, you have to watch it. Chapter 11 Angel Refactoring. Mihoyo Anime made an awesome animation for the game Honkai Impact, which we previously covered in this show. It's chapter 11, Angel Refactoring. Too much awesomeness in this. We had to watch it in slow motion and multiple times. Maybe you can pick up a few tricks from the animation. One Punch Cat, Saita Meow, the hero. You only need one punch for impact in Dylan Gu's latest animation. Saita Meow has a new challenger. How many punches Saita Meow needs to beat his opponent? One? No more spoiler. Go watch it after the show. On to Artworks of the Month. This month, we have selected the best of the best artworks made in Blender. Maybe you can pick their brains using the links in the show notes. Anyway, let's see the good stuff. Oddish is a plant-type Pokemon. This artwork has so many things done right. The emotion is perfect with the animation, the colors used to fit the atmosphere, the gradients are perfect. You can still see the texture painting strokes in the model. This must be the happiest Oddish we have ever seen. It's pure joy. Congrats to Soulfire for stirring our souls. This just in. 
overlapping grease pencil strokes is a thing of the past. Now you can treat all strokes like a fill. This frees up more use cases for grease pencil. We love this feature very much. Thank you, Antonio Vasquez. LANPR, the real-time line art, has a few major enhancements. Single CPU thread line chaining on a super huge scene has gone down from about 600 seconds to about one second. I would say that's a major speed up. The calculation of line intersection, which used to be done when you press the update button, is now done in real time. You can see it happen as you overlap the meshes. This is super convenient. LAMPR now has a basic SVG exporter. It only generates the strokes in the text editor for now, but it's a good start. Great for SVG diehard users. Wu Yiming, keep up the good work. We are totally behind you. If you are new here, welcome, and please subscribe. Tell your friends about the show as well. To those who click the show notes, we have many hidden goodies in there. Also, go to these links and get even more NPR greatness. If you would still like to see the stylized documentary, as mentioned in the fifth show, be one of the cool patrons of the show on Patreon. We need 200 of you to make that happen. I would like to now personally extend extreme gratitude towards everyone who supported Light BWK in his GoFundMe campaign. We have literally ran out of ways to say thank you, but still, thank you again. Just another 2,000 to make sure he can make the next show happen. So if you can, go help him out. Before we go, one last question. Will you compile Blender just to test LANPR?